I'm going to show you some math ideas that are pretty common when solving physics problems at a bit of a higher level. So let's start at looking at an example of multivariable calculus as it's used in classical mechanics. Let's say we have a spherical pendulum. Using spherical coordinates, we can write the location of the mass using x, y, z as follows, where L is the fixed length of the rod. In a problem like this, we might be asked to find the equation of motion through Lagrangian mechanics. The first step in doing that is to find the kinetic energy of the system. To find kinetic energy, we want to find a half mv squared, where in this case, the velocity is a vector with three components in the x, y, and z directions. Using a dot to represent a derivative with respect to time, we need to find x dot, y dot, and z dot to find our velocity vector. To differentiate x with respect to time, we use a combination of the product rule and the chain rule since both phi and theta are variables that change with time. The product rule gives two terms and the chain rule gives theta dot and phi dot. Z dot just requires the chain rule. A physics major will become quite fast at this kind of differentiation. Now let's look at some vector calculus essential for electromag problems. If you want to find a magnetic field due to a current, you may use the Biot-Savart law. The equation includes an integral, some constants, and a cross product between two vectors. These vectors are the length of current and the location where the field is being measured. A cross product gives a third vector that is at right angles to the original two. We want this since magnetic field flows at a 90 degree angle to current flow. As an example of how to take a cross product, say we have two vectors, A and B, with components in the x, y, and z directions. Take the cross product of each term. Two components in the same direction will have zero cross product, but x crossed with y, for example, will give z. If the directions I'm crossing appear in the sequence x, y, z, x, y, then I know the resulting component will be positive, otherwise it will be negative. Here is our resultant vector. The idea of this video is just to give you a taste of how math is used in physics. So don't worry too much about remembering the details. You'll be sure to encounter these ideas as you go along.